In this video, we're going to talk about the keyword union. Because it's a key word, we're going to add a definition of union into our course notes and then some examples. Once again, I don't care if you use the three examples I have here, but I recommend you come up with your own examples that will help you uh, hone your definition of union. Or you can answer the challenge problem in the course notes. And if you want to double check your work, join me in office hours. Okay, so here we go. As before, we're going to see a little bit of this file navigation happening, just so I can save these lecture notes for you after I'm done recording this video. Okay, so definition. The union of two sets, A and B, is the set of all elements that are either in A or in B. Now, or is the key word here. So if we were going to write out the union, we'd write out this U. It's actually like the upside down intersection sort of thing. So we'd say A union B. And in LaTeX, you would write this one out as backslash cup, C-U-P, backslash C-U-P, cup. A union B is the set of all elements X such that X is in A or X is in B. That's not so bad. Seems like a pretty reasonable definition. It's really just the merging of the two sets into one new set. Okay, so let's do as we did before and draw this out in a Venn diagram. This is a Venn diagram of the union of A and B. So if we have a set A, we have the set B, then the union is all the elements that are in either of the two sets. Because it's all the elements that are in either of the two sets, all the elements that are in the intersection also count as elements that are in the union of A and B. So it's all the elements in A, all the elements in A and B, and all the elements in B. That's not so bad. That's like the standard Venn diagram image you're to think of when you say the word union. Okay. Let's now give some properties. Union is a binary operation. That is, it takes two sets and gives you a new set. Because it takes two sets, it is called binary and then acts on them. Uh, binary, uh, the union is also commutative, as is the intersection. So here we go. A union B is equal to B union A. It doesn't matter which order you write out the two sets that the union is operating on. So we also have associativity. So if we wanted to find the union of the four sets, A, B, C, and D, we could really go C union D there. That's binary. One set, union, another set. You could do that first. And then you could say union B. And now look, this is one set, union, a second set. So that makes it binary again. You can do the same thing. Now here is a set, one set, on the right-hand side of the union. You could say A union B. Because it is associative, it doesn't matter how you group these with parentheses. The parentheses are unimportant 
in the operation of union. Okay, so that seems like some pretty good properties of the union. So let's try out our examples, which hopefully help us see better what's going on. So let's let A equal the set of 1, 3, 5, and B equal the set of 2, 4, 6. Starting out simple. You could draw that as A, 1, 3, 5, and B as 2, 4, 6, then A union B is equal to the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That seems pretty good. Okay, we'll just keep it cruising because that example wasn't too challenging. We'll give another example. Let A equal the set of all English letters in the alphabet. You can see I'm just going to use the dot, dot, dot to represent all the letters in between F and Z. We're going to let B just be the vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. And then in this case, A union B is just equal to A because as we have these defined these sets, B is just a subset of A. Because B is a subset of A, the union is just equal to A. Okay, there we go. We're cruising through these examples. So good, one last one, example. Let's let A equal all the elements of X, all the elements such that 0 is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 4.4. Let's change colors to help our brain think about these things. Let B be the set of all the elements such that 1.8 is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 6.2 and keep the colors going because I think it helps. C is going to be all the elements such that X is a natural number. I'm not going to list them all. I can't. Uh -huh. Okay, so here we go. We can imagine the set C on a real number line. So what you get is we'll put a tick for 0, tick for 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, and it just keeps going, right? And then we can imagine B is all the numbers on a real number line. So let's draw out a nice line. And it starts at 1.8, that's somewhere around here. It goes up to 6.2, that's somewhere around here. Okay, so there's B represented as an interval. We'll go back to black for A. We're gonna think of A as an interval on a real line, just the same as B, but with different endpoints. So A goes down to zero, that's somewhere around here and goes up to 4.4, .4. that's somewhere around here. So then A union B union C is quite a set. Okay, so it consists of all the elements from zero to four, all of the real numbers from 1.8 to 6.2, so that's really like X such that zero is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 6.2. You see how I'm taking the lower bound of A and the upper bound of B, or X is equal to, and now we'll start at seven because that's the next integer above six, eight, nine, 10, all the way up. So isn't that a fun set? It's pretty hard to draw the set, but the set builder notation allows us to describe it 
fairly well. Hmm, that's pretty fun. Okay, so let's go for our last page, slide. I don't know what we call these, challenge problem. Here we go. So suppose A1, A2, all the way up to AK are intervals of real numbers. such that AI is equal to the set of elements X such that zero is less than or equal to X. Let's just fix up that zero so you don't think it's a six. Eh, a little bit better. And less than I, one over I, and this is defined for I equal to one, two, all the way up to K. Now, the challenge is to describe the set A1 union, A2 union, all the way up to AK. So there is your challenge. Describe that set as um, an interval. And you know what? This whole bit right here actually has a shorthand notation in the world of math. We could say the union from i equals 1 to k of a i. Okay, there you have it. Union. We had a definition. We had some basic properties. We saw how to visualize this in a number of different ways. And hopefully the examples gave us a little bit more intuition behind the union. And here's a good challenge problem to leave you with.